Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. Let your light scatter the darkness.
Let us pray. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Good evening and welcome to Lake of the Isles Lutheran Church in Minneapolis. As we mark this journey of Lent with the music of Marty Haugen's Holden Evening Prayer. Throughout this season, we have been focusing on the book of Mark, the shortest of the Gospels, and we have heard this presented by actor John Tro. In the beginning, we heard the story of Jesus calling his disciples along the Sea of Galilee. It continued last week with the journey back and forth across the sea and the healing in the end of a young girl with the words Talitha Kum. This evening we continue the story of Jesus' miracles and once again returning to the Sea of Galilee. But within the story tonight we hear the lamenting tale of the death of Jesus' own relative John the Baptist and how it tragically affected him. And then we hear the story of the feeding of thousands. For indeed, in St. Mark's Gospel, the story is told twice. First, of Jesus feeding 5,000 and then feeding 4,000. And still, with these wondrous miracles, the disciples wondering who Jesus is. The Gospel of St. Mark, presented by John Troll. And he went out from there and came to his hometown, and his disciples were following him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and the many listeners were astonished, saying, Where does this man get these things, and, and what is this wisdom given to him, and such miracles as these performed by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joses, and Judas, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his hometown, among his own relatives, and in his own household. And he could do no miracles there, except he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he wondered at their unbelief. And he was going around the villages teaching. And he summoned the twelve and began to send them out in pairs. And he was giving them authority over the unclean spirits. And he instructed them that they should take nothing for their journey, nothing except a mere staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belt, but to wear sandals, and he instructed them, do not put on two tunics. And he said, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave town. And any place that does not receive you or listen to you, as you go out from there, shake off the dust from the soles of your feet for the testimony against them. And they went out and preach that men should repent. And they were casting out many demons and were anointing with oil many sick people and healing them. And King Herod heard of it, for his name had become well known. And people were saying, John the Baptist has risen from the dead, and that is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others were saying, oh, he is Elijah. And others were saying, he's a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he kept saying, John, whom I beheaded, has risen. For Herod himself had sent and had John arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted him put to death, but could not do so. 
for Herod was afraid of John, and knowing he was a righteous and holy man, he kept him safe. And when he heard him speak, he was very perplexed, but he used to enjoy listening to him. And a strategic day came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his lords and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. And when the daughter of Herodias herself came in and danced, ooh, she pleased Herod and his dinner guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you want, and I shall give it to you. Whatever you ask of me, I will give to you up to half my kingdom. And she went to her mother and said, What shall I ask for? And her mother said, The head of John the Baptist on a platter. And immediately she came in haste before the king and said, I want you to give me right away the head of John the Baptist on a platter. Hmm. And although the king was very sorry, but because of his oath and because of his dinner guests, he was unwilling to refuse her. And immediately he sent an executioner and commanded him to bring back his head. And he went out and had him beheaded in the prison, brought the head on a platter, gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. And when John's disciples heard about this, they came and took away the body and laid it in a tomb. And the apostles gathered together with Jesus and they reported to him all they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a lonely place and rest a while. For there were many people coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. And they went in the boat to a lonely place by themselves. And the people saw them going, and many recognized them. And they ran there together, on foot, from all the cities, and got there ahead of them. And when he had come ashore, he saw... a great multitude. And he felt compassion for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it was already quite late, his disciples came to him and said, the place is desolate, it's, uh, and it's already quite late. Uh, Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding villages and countrysides and, and buy themselves something to eat. And he said to them, you give them something to eat. And they said, well, should we go spend 200 denarii on bread and get them something to eat? And he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go look. And when they found out, they said, uh, five and... Uh, Two fish. And he commanded them all to recline by groups on the green grass. And they reclined in companies of hundreds and fifties. And he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up towards heaven, he blessed the food, broke the loaves, and he kept giving them to his disciples to set before them. And they divided up the two fish among them all. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they picked up 12 baskets full of what was left over of the broken pieces and of the fish. And there were 5,000 men who ate the loaves. And he made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side of Bethsaida, 
while he himself was sending the multitude away. And after bidding them farewell, he departed to the mountain to pray. And when it was evening, the boat was in the midst of the sea, and he was alone on the land. And seeing them straining at the oars, for the wind was against them, at about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. And he intended to pass them by. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were frightened. But he said to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind stopped. And they were greatly astonished, for they had not, not gained any insight from the incident of the loaves, but their heart was hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored to the shore. And when they had come out of the boat, immediately the people recognized him and ran about that whole country and began to carry on their pallets those who were sick to the place they heard he was. And whenever he entered villages or countrysides or cities, they were laying the sick in the marketplaces and entreating him that he might just touch the fringe of his cloak. And as many as touched it were being cured. And the Pharisees and some of the scribes gathered together around him when they had come from Jerusalem and had seen that his disciples were eating their bread with impure hands, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they carefully wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they cleanse themselves. And there are many other things which they have received in order to observe, such as the washing of cups and pitchers and copper pots. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat their bread with impure hands? He said to them, Rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. Neglecting the commandment of God, you hold to the tradition of men. And he was also saying, you nicely set aside the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and mother, and he who speaks evil of father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, anything of mine you may have been helped by is korban, that is to say given to God, you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus invalidating the word of God by your tradition. And you do many such things as that. After he called the multitude to him again, he began saying to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside the man which going into him can defile him, but the things which proceed out of the man are what defile the man. If any man has ears to hear, let him hear. And when leaving the multitude, he entered the house, his disciples questioned him about the parable. And he was saying to them, Are you so lacking in understanding? Do you not understand that whatever goes into the man from outside cannot defile him, because it doesn't go into his heart, but into his stomach and is eliminated? And he was saying to them, that which proceeds out of the man, that is what defiles the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed the evil thoughts, fornications, thefts, murders, adulteries, deeds of coveting and wickedness, along with slander, envy, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things proceed from the man and defile him. 
And from there he arose and went away to the region of Tyre. And when he entered a house, he wanted no one to know of it. Yet he could not escape notice. And after hearing of him, a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit came and fell at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of the Syrophoenician race, and she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he was saying to her, let the children be satisfied first, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered and said to him, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs under the table feed on the children's crumbs. And he said to her, Because of this your answer, go your way. The demon has gone out of your daughter. And going back to her home, she found the child lying on the bed, the demon having departed. And he went out again from there to the region of Tyre and came through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee within the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him one who was deaf and spoke with difficulty. And they entreated him to lay his hands upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude by himself. And he put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, he touched his tongue with the saliva, and looking up to heaven with a deep sigh, he said, Ephephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, and the impediment of his tongue was removed, and he began to speak plainly. And he gave them orders not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them, the more widely they continued to proclaim it. And they were utterly astonished, saying, He has done all things well. He makes even the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. In those days again, there was a great multitude, and they had nothing to eat. He called his disciples to them and said, I feel compassion for the multitude, for they have remained with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their home, they will faint on the way, and some have come from a distance. And his disciples are saying, where would anyone be able to find enough to satisfy these men here in a desolate place? And he said to them, how many loaves do you have? And they said, Seven. And he directed the multitude to sit on the ground, and taking the seven loaves, he gave thanks and broke them and started giving them to his disciples to serve them. And they served them to the multitude. They also had a few small fish, and after he blessed them, he ordered these to be served as well. And they ate and were satisfied. And they picked up seven baskets full of what was left over of the broken pieces, and about 4,000 were there. And then he sent them away. And he entered the boat with his disciples and came to the district of Dalmanutha. And the Pharisees came out and began to argue with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him. And sighing deeply in his spirit, he said, why does this generation seek for a sign? Truly I say to you, no sign shall be given to this generation. Leaving them, he again embarked and went away to the other side. And they had forgotten to take bread and did not have more than one loaf in the boat with them. And he was giving them orders, saying to them, Watch out, beware of the leaven of Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they began to discuss with one another the fact that they had no bread. And Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you discuss the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet see or understand? 
Do you have a hardened heart? Having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many full baskets of broken pieces did you pick up? And they said, 12. And when I broke the seven for the 4,000, how many large baskets full of broken pieces did you pick up? And they said, seven. And he was saying to them, do you not yet understand? The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God, I live to do your will. I Grant 
weather that nourishes all of creation. Keep watch on our loved ones and keep us from danger. For all the beloved who rest in your mercy. Help us, comfort us all of our days. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.